Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're all doing well. I wanted to make this video to show and talk about the shooting bags that I've been making. Ever since I started to get into precision rimfire competitions, I've been playing around with different bag designs, different features I can put on the shooting bags, different shapes and whatnot to really try and tweak the design to just have a really nice solid assortment of bags that I can choose from for competitions and just general shooting as well. It doesn't have to be within a match. And I also know a lot of people make their own bags at home. So that's the reason why I'm doing this video is to give anyone who's trying to DIY their own shooting bag, uh, give them some ideas and maybe show some of the features that I've implemented in my, in my bags that have really worked out well for me. Uh, I don't plan to sell my bags. I have sold a couple of them, um, but really like I'm not trying to make a business out of this. I don't need a side hustle. The only time I have inventory per se is if I make a few bags at once. Generally when I'm making a new bag design or implementing new features, I'll make two or three just because I have the material to do so and I like to kind of play around with different stitching techniques. But like I don't keep an inventory to sell or anything like that. So don't think I'm trying to sell you bags. I'm making this video more for other people making their bags at home and giving them some good ideas and maybe some tips and tricks. If any of you, any of you follow Jonathan on his YouTube channel, OCAPJ, he actually showed one of the bags that I made and sent to him in a more recent range vlog. And actually the range vlog that he uploaded uh, this week, I guess, I'm not sure when I'll upload this video, but in a very recent range vlog of him running through a, like a dry run of the NRL 22 course, he actually used my bag exclusively throughout that. I watched the whole video and I didn't see any, any other bags that he used, which I think is pretty cool. Again, uh, big thanks to Jonathan if you're watching this for testing it out for me. I didn't expect him to even show it on video um, because I know he doesn't generally accept free things to do reviews on. Obviously I'm different. I'm not a company trying to sell my product. Um, I just wanted to send some of, my, some of my bag designs and give them to much more experienced shooters so that they could give me feedback in terms of what works and maybe what doesn't because being a much more amateur shooter myself, just getting into the sport, I kind of wanted to tweak the bag designs and again have the knowledge of very competent shooters that might see an issue in the design of something that I might not even be aware of so that's kind of why I sent him a few bags to try out so anyway thanks again Jonathan if you're watching that I really appreciate it and I hope it's working out for you um, so I really don't have any plans for this video I kind of just plan to show the different bags that I've made these are a really good assortment of bags that represent kind of what I've been making through this time uh, I must have made upwards of 25 bags in the last six months just playing around with the designs and stuff but a lot of the older ones that I made if I didn't give them away, um, I had to reuse them because the filling I use for my bags are by far the most expensive part of each one. So if I know I'm not gonna use an older bag design, I'll kind of reuse the filling from that and put it into my newer bag so I don't have a lot of the older designs that I had made. But I've been making everything from like a simple rear squeeze bag to like a more generic multi-purpose bag to of course your classic barricade style bags. I got like a little uh, pump pillow like bag here as well as more recently I just made these two bags that mount onto an Arca rail so it can be attached to your rifle really securely which is really cool. And again, I thought I'd just talk about these. Before I do that, I figured I would talk about the materials I've been using. So I have switched almost exclusively to 1000 denier Cordura fabric. I had been trying out some 600 denier Defender fabric is what it's called. So this bag for instance is the Defender fabric. Um, of course being a lower thread count it is a little bit more malleable and flexible. But I really actually like the feel of the 1000 denier Cordura and it's very very durable as well. Obviously a lot of different bags and stuff are made from this material. So I, I like that material more and that's kind of what I'm using exclusively now. In terms of all my little features on the bags, um, all my nylon webbing is marine grade. So it's UV proof, waterproof, um, very resistant to abrasion. The Velcro I use is all Velcro brand and the thread. Uh, I can't remember the name right now, probably couldn't even pronounce it, but it's a German made thread. Uh, and I double stitch all my seams. More for peace of mind, I've never had a seam blow out on me. Uh, I used to just single stitch my seams, but just seeing as how the shooting bags in uh, in use are used quite roughly and you know, you're 
smashing your gun up against them and stuff and you're throwing them on the ground. I just decided to start double stitching all my seams for peace of mind. So talking about the fill of the bags, all these bags here are filled with the exact same thing. The pump pillow of course is filled with a lighter foam. But I found for the barricade bags here, um, I settled on these polymer pellets, really small polymer pellets. I think the brand is called Polyfill that makes them. I don't actually buy that brand because it's quite expensive. I buy it in more bulk packs of, um, I, think, I think eight pound bags is what I buy them in now. But it's still quite expensive. I think it works out to be about eight to $11 per pound. And you know, if each bag is one to three pounds, depending how big it is. Um, that's a big cost in making these bags for sure. Uh, anyway, I did try a bunch of other more classic fills like rice, beans, airsoft BBs, lead pellets and whatnot. I wanted a fill that didn't hold moisture. That was a big criteria of mine. So obviously all the food items like rice and stuff was kind of off the table. And I found airsoft BBs didn't form in the bag very nicely and their weight to volume ratio was a little bit lighter than what I liked. So I found a really nice um, give and weight in these little polymer beads uh, or pellets that I use. And I just think they're really optimal for shooting bags, at least if you like kind of a medium weight fill. All right, so let's just take a look at the bags and go one by one. I'll just talk briefly about them and give you any ideas that I had. So the first one here is a very simple rear squeeze bag that you would use for like prone shooting or uh, bench shooting. You could use it as a really small barricade bag, I guess, but I've never tried to. I just stitched a simple strap for your hand to go into it so it's a little bit more uh, easy to manipulate, but I actually found with the materials that I use, even with the 600 denier Defender fabric, this is actually not very effective. Um, a rear squeeze bag is much more effective when the material is stretchy because that way when you try and make it go higher or lower for the support, the rear support of your rifle, uh, you can actually do so because this fabric is so stiff when you go to squeeze it the height doesn't really change which kind of defeats the purpose of it so it doesn't actually work that well if you were to make a rear squeeze bag one with a simple stretch material like a sock for instance a lot of people will make theirs from socks um, is actually more effective than using a very um, I was gonna say stiff, but it's not a stiff material. It just doesn't stretch whatsoever. So there are even some fancy rear bags on the market you can purchase have a one-way stretch fabric. So it only stretches in run one direction, which is obviously really good because you can really adjust the height of your rear bag. So this one honestly doesn't get much use. Um, it just stays in my car if ever I forget my, my range bag, I at least have kind of an emergency backup. I made a couple of these. And again, I gave a few away. They don't work that well, <laughs> to be totally honest. And the stitching on them is quite poor uh, on this example because I was basically just rushing it to see how the shape would work. So that's my tip to you. If you're gonna make a rear bag, definitely use a stretcher material, not something rigid like, um, like a Cordura or Defender fabric. The second bag we'll talk about here is the rectangular bag here. Um, this is actually a really nice bag for many multiple uh, uses. I actually use this as a rear bag quite a bit. I don't mind a little bit of a larger bag for a rear bag. And even though it's made from 1000 denier Cordura, it works much better than a small rear bag like this because just the sheer amount of volume you have here, you can play around with the shape of the bag in order to give you that elevation adjustment a lot easier than something small like this. So I actually use this as a rear bag quite a bit when I'm bench shooting, but for barricades, it also works quite well. I gravitate towards this rectangular bag for um, stages that I have to shoot off a ladder and go between rungs because it's a lot easier to um, take in and out between rungs than something like this bag where it has ears that could get caught on the steps. So a flat bag like this is quite nice. I just have two handles on the sides here, as well as a strap on the top. Um, the top strap you can put over your barrel so it stays attached to your gun while you're transitioning between barricades, which is pretty neat. And I also just have a little clip here in case I wanna just clip it onto my bag. But besides that, it's a really simple shape. Again, just a rectangle and it works well, again, for different barricades and such and as a rear bag as well. 
Going on to the more classic style of barricade bags. Now I say this one because this was the first one I made. I, I showed it on video and this was the first one that I used in a match and it worked quite well. Obviously you can see the shape was definitely inspired by the game changer style bags, although it is quite different. Um, I mentioned in one of the videos, and it's funny because Jonathan mentioned in his video as well, it's kind of like a hybrid between the game changer and the fortune cookie. And that's actually kind of what I was going for. The game changer bags, how it's stitched is the two inner panels here come to an acute point in the middle where I stitch a flat panel in the middle here, just so that it's able to, to clamp onto wider barricades a little bit easier. I found if I, if I did not add this flat panel here, if I were to go and put this on anything thicker than like the edge of a two by four, it was putting a lot of stress on the seams and it didn't clamp down as well. So with the small flat panel here, I find it works better on, uh, you know, anything upwards of four inches for a, a surface to clamp onto. The original one here, I put a two inch flat panel in the middle and I found that to be a little bit unnecessary. So all my recent ones, I've just been sewing a one inch panel again to kind of alleviate stress on that middle seam as well as having a little bit of a bigger gap there like the fortune cookie to clamp onto wider surfaces. So it's actually been working really nicely. This one was very basic in design and it was a little bit too large in my opinion for my preference. So the ones I've been making afterwards are definitely a little bit smaller. You can see they're about the same size as a pint size game changer. Very similar in shape. Um, I started stitching the handles a lot nicer. I use a two inch nylon um, strap and I stitched them, stitch them so that they're really comfy to grab onto. Uh, I leave the top ones flat because when your rifle is on the top, it's less likely to snag on anything. And I've also started to implement a Velcro closure in order for me to adjust the fill as necessary. Although once I adjust the fill to my liking, I'll generally just keep it that way. I, I won't open them back up later, but it is really frustrating when you stitch a bag closed and then realize it's a little bit too filled or not filled enough. So I added the Velcro closure, which I really do like. Um, but besides that, it works really nicely. This black one here, by the way, is the exact same, uh, it was the same batch of bags that I made that uh, one of them I sent to Jonathan on his channel. Same size and features, so this is the exact same one I made for him just in black. And um, again, nice size, I think. This one here, it's a similar size, it's slightly larger, but similar design, I got my Velcro panel on the front, again, a little pull tab to open it up if needed. The same style of handles, but you'll notice this, these two little loops um, that I stitched onto the top of the side of the top, pardon me. And what these loops are for is this removable strap. So I was watching a lot of um, videos online of PRS competitions, NRL competitions, and I saw a bunch of sh shooters, a, a bunch of competitors have their bags attached to the rifles via a, a scope strap or a strap that goes around their scope or barrel. So I decided to try and make one myself and it actually works. This strap you can just put through the little loops here and I have just a big Velcro panel to secure it and tighten it as necessary. So you can see you can stick your barrel through that or your scope and just kind of have your bag attached to your rifle as you're going from barricade to barricade. I found though I don't really like this feature because the bag kind of swings on the rifle and when you're moving your big heavy long rifle it can be a little bit cumbersome and it feels a bit more bulky than necessary so I don't run the strap although it's a feature that I stitched into this bag. I think I might remove these two tabs. I'll have to go in and undo the stitching. I'll remove these two tabs and then stitch it back up so it's kind of a more regular bag just because I find this strap method doesn't really suit my personal shooting style. Um, but that kind of inspired me to make these guys which mount onto the arc rail of my rifle so that it's attached to my rifle in a very secure way. But I'm gonna talk about these last because these were the most recent ones that I made just the past uh, month or so. I'm gonna just go over this guy first. Uh, let me just put these to the side. So this guy here is a positional pillow that 
is used in your shooting positions when you have some negative space. So if you're on a barricade with the front of your rifle and you have a lot of open space in your body, it's really hard to get a nice uh, secure shooting position because you have some movement in the rear. So if you have this pillow, you can put it under your arm and have a really nice solid position to shoot from. You can use it when you're kneeling in many different ways. You can put this even kind of between your leg and your butt if you're kneeling to give the rear of your body some support. So there's a lot of different ways you can use this. Um, again, I stitched this from the same materials, but it's filled with a much lighter foam. And the foam I used is similar to what like a Pelican case would have inside it, but I cut them up into little squares before filling the uh, bag with. I originally just filled it up with the foam in layers, so it was like a solid piece of foam, but it didn't compress the way I wanted to, and it was a little bit too stiff, so it didn't conform to, you know, whatever you needed it to conform to. But now, with the little pieces of foam, you can see it compresses really nicely, but it still kind of puffs back up. I do have a zipper closure here, which I think is really important for a bag like this to be able to adjust the fill. Um, I have two straps here. You could throw it on your arm or just use them for uh, grabbing onto the bag. I put a little Ontario Provincial patch here just because I had a bunch lying around. And this one happened to be green that it matched, so I just threw that on. But this strap here, um, this strap itself, by the way, is from an old duffel bag. Uh, and I kind of reused it. So you can throw this over your body. I'm trying not to hit the mic to not cause horrible sounds. But throw this over your body. You can go around with your rifle, put your rifle down on a barricade, and if needed, you can go ahead and swing this bag around to use like this, which I think is really cool. So I haven't actually got to use this in a match yet because I used this during the lockdown when the matches were canceled, but I definitely want to try it um, because I've seen other guys use them during matches and it seems to be a very effective tool. So I definitely wanted to make one of these. I can't remember the dimensions of this particular one. I think it's 10 and a half inches and it's a cube, um, generally anyway. So that's kind of my pump pillow that I think is pretty neat, but I have not tried it during a match. I have shot with it at the range and it seems to work really nicely. I think once I fixed the fill, cutting the foam into little blocks like that definitely helped a lot. And going on to my two latest creations, these were inspired by uh, the Area 419 grip changer. So my friend actually bought one to the range and he uses it for offhand shooting. So he uses it to support his hand. Um, but obviously you can use them as little barricade bags as well. And it's funny because the video uh, Jonathan just posted, he has an Area 419 bag like this. And it's the first time I've seen it on his uh, on his channel. And that's actually kind of what triggered me to make this video today because I saw that on the video and I was like, hey, cool, I just I just made one of those. So this design's a bit different because the clamp is in the middle. I went on Amazon and I just purchased these clamps. I think they were like 18 bucks each. They actually work really nicely. They're pretty um, robust. They feel really nice, uh, solid aluminum clamps that are standard for Arca rails. They actually have a little bubble level on them if they're used for their intended purpose, which is photography. But I went ahead to my hardware store and just purchased a, I think it's a one and a quarter inch steel um, flat rod thing, plate, I guess. I cut it to size and I just drilled and threaded some holes for these screws here. And I'm using these nuts to help them stand up a little bit more so they don't slip under the nylon strap. But those screws help to uh, secure the plate so that it's basically one piece with the bag. Hopefully you can see that there. And I stitched the bag um, in order so that I could use this plate to mount onto this Arca rail. So these two nylon straps here I stitched in order to hold this little plate down onto it. And this one is a really small bag, very similar to the Area 419. I think it's called the Grip Changer uh, in terms of size anyway. And it works, it functions basically the same way. It's still filled with the same fill as my other bags. So it's quite light. The Area 419 model, the one I saw that my friend had, is a really heavy fill, which I think feels really nice, but this one still works pretty good. I think if there's a ladder stage, this would be my go-to bag um, for sure because it stays on your rifle. So transitioning between each rung, as you can see in Jonathan's video, by the way, is a lot easier because it's a really secure way of just attaching your rifle 
or pardon me, your bag to your rifle. Uh, and the fill, the beads inside here still take away that harsh um, solid on solid contact you're trying to avoid when shooting off barricades. So this one still conforms enough where you can get some movement with your rifle. And I think it's gonna work really nicely. This one here I made afterwards. And you can see here, it's basically a barricade bag on the same plate system that I made. This is actually very similar size to this bag, which I would say this is my favorite size barricade bag. You can see it's a little bit less tall, but because of the clamp, the way the rifle sits on it, it's about the same height anyway. I haven't run these in matches yet because I just finished making them a few weeks ago and I actually haven't shot with them at the range yet either, but this upcoming match on Saturday, I hope to get these puppies on my rifle to try them out because I think they're pretty cool. This one here you can see I made pretty narrow. It's almost, I would say, almost half of the width of my usual barricade bags. And uh, I did that for a few reasons. First off, it was to keep the weight and bulk down from the front of your rifle, but also, the fact that it's so securely attached to the bottom of your rifle, I didn't feel like the extra surface area, which would usually allow you to point the rifle in different ways on top of a bag, really came into play. Um, just playing around with this at home, it seems like if I put this on a flat surface where it's not clamping down on anything, there is a bit of stability issues because the rifle tends to want to go like this. Now, it's really easy to control if you just put your hand um, on the fore end of your rifle, um, but that could be a potential issue, but then I could just use this one and it's very secure in that in that regards. But this one I think will come into play for barricades where I can uh, sandwich this onto the barricade and have my rifle on that. I think it'll work really nicely, especially if I, if I have to transition between different barricades. So I'm excited to try that. Also the Arca mount that I bought off Amazon has kind of an extended knob. It has probably half an inch of a like a stem before the knob and I wanted to keep this thin enough so it wasn't protruding out under the knob so I could still easily adjust the knob on the rifle without the bag getting in the way so yeah I'm actually pretty excited to try these out I think they're pretty uh, cool little projects that I made here to um, very securely uh, fasten onto my rifle at the moment you'll notice that I'm only using the camera um, threaded screw here to install it onto the plate I made but in the near future I'll probably drill and tap and then countersink another hole just so it has two points of um, fasteners because with one fastener only it could twist uh, loose potentially so I'll probably do that if, uh, if that's something you noticed but anyway just wanted to show these I didn't really have anything planned for this video. I know I was probably again rambling as I <laughs> am guilty of, but I wanted to give anyone else out there who's uh, making their own bags at home some ideas. I think, you know, you can create some pretty cool stuff. This, making these bags at home has been such a lifesaver during the, the pandemic because I was so bored out of my mind that uh, learning to sew better was actually really fun and making bags that I can use for, use for competition is a really neat way of uh, utilizing that hobby. Um, yeah, one last note, if you're gonna be using these materials specifically, like heavy duty nylon and, and 1000 denier fabric, you know, depending on where you're stitching, some of these stitches go through probably four or five, even six different layers of material, you definitely need a heavy duty sewing machine. Trust me, I went through two sewing machines <laughs> make, trying to make my bags before I settled on my heavy duty machine that I have now. Uh, the first one I broke was a birthday gift uh, to my fiance at the time or who at the time was my fiance, uh, that didn't go over too well. <laughs> so definitely don't destroy your mom's or wife's or your girlfriend's sewing machine. Get your own heavy duty machine because you'll definitely need it for material like this. So that's a warning. Um, but besides that, you can really create some cool stuff once you learn how to sew properly. I originally learned to sew um, a couple years ago to make funny Halloween costumes, <laughs> which, 
uh, yeah, that's just the reason why I learned. And then recently again, I started sewing my own shooting bags. Anyway, that's it. Thank you for all the uh, feedback to everyone who I uh, let try, or for everyone who I let try my shooting bags because the feedback really helped me design a bag that I think works really, really nicely now for competition and matches. This is generally the design I'm gonna stick with going forward. It's the same design I sent to Jonathan to try out. It seems to work really nicely. This general size is great and all the features make it very effective in shooting a match with, but it's not it's not so feature packed where things get in the way of each other anyway. So stay tuned for more videos, guys. I hope everyone's staying safe. Um, hope this video was inspirational for those of you who are trying to make your own at home and it was good content for anyone who is interested. Take care. I will see you in the next video.